What's up you guys, Joe here from the Average Joe Investor Channel where we are focused on helping the average Joe become financially independent. A few days ago I put out a poll on the YouTube channel asking what topics you guys wanted to see here in the next week and by a large margin most of you wanted to see the top dividend stocks for 2022. In this video I'm going to cover for you four different dividend stocks, two of which I already own in my portfolio to which I'm going to be adding here very soon. I'm going to explain to you why these dividend stocks are great fits for my portfolio and why they might be a great fit for yours as well. We're going to look at the dividend history for each dividend stock. We're going to look at the dividend yield, their dividend payout ratios. We'll address any potential concerns we might have with each of the dividend stocks. And hopefully you'll come away from the video knowing that you've got some great options for 2022. You guys know I never want to waste your time and I always want to deliver massive value with every single video that I make. So without further delay, let's get started. All right guys, we're in the monthly dividend stock spreadsheet here, which is a perk that I put out to all of my Patreon members. So if you're interested in joining the Patreon community, getting access to this spreadsheet, all the spreadsheets that I use in all of my videos, and learning about all the moves I make in my own portfolio, plus all of my option strategies in that segment of the portfolio, check out the link in the description below. We have all the dividend stocks in the spreadsheet that have been raising dividends for at least five consecutive years. We've got their dividend tier status, which is right here, number of years consecutive that they've been raising raising dividends, their growth rates, their payout ratios, everything you need to make an informed decision. And what we're going to do here is we're going to identify four different dividend stocks that meet all of the criteria that I like to have in my dividend portfolio. When I personally think about dividend stocks for 2022, I have to be thinking of dividend stocks that have a consistent dividend track record, meaning that they've been raising dividends for at least five consecutive years every single year, that they have a payout ratio based on free cash flow, not based off net income, of less than 75%. Again, free cash flow is the amount of money left over of their profits after investing back into the business, which I think is a good indicator of how much cash they have really available to pay out dividends. A dividend stock paying a dividend that exceeds their free cash flow is a warning sign to me. And of course, when I think about a dividend stock, I want it to have a healthy dividend yield, at least two and a half percent. I also want that dividend stock to have a healthy dividend growth rate, the measure of how much they raise their dividend year over year. And for me, it's important that a dividend growth rate exceed the long-term inflation rate, which is a hot topic right now. So generally, I want to see it at least 5%, with the long-term inflation rate being right around 3 or 4%, a little bit higher right now, but historically been a little bit lower. All right, here are the four dividend stocks that we're going to be looking at. We've got one challenger, meaning they've been raising dividends for five to nine years, two dividend contenders that have been raising dividends from at least 10 years to less than 24, and then one dividend champion, which has been raising dividends for at least 25 consecutive years. All right, first dividend stock we're talking about here is the Cisco Corporation, ticker symbol SYY in the consumer staples sector of the economy, a 51 year consecutive dividend streak, raising dividends every single year, 51 years, they're a dividend champion. Price per share currently $72.73. Their dividend growth rate is very stable at 8% over the one year, 9.29% over the three years, 8.67% uh, over the five years, and 10 year growth rate 11.37%. Current dividend yield is 2.58%, and their payout ratio based on free cash flow is only 26% right here. They pay a dividend here of 47 cents per share. And as you can see from their free cash flow per share, it is increasing every single year in 2017 to 2018 to 2019 and 2020. Cisco is a global leader in selling, marketing, and distributing food and non-food products to restaurants, healthcare, and educational facilities lodging establishments and other customers. I personally have seen many times driving through a Starbucks or driving by other restaurants and I see a big, huge Cisco semi-truck parked outside. This is the company that throughout the United States is making sure that so many different businesses have the food and other products that they need to run their business. I personally think that Cisco Corporation has a very safe and stable dividend that is unlikely to be cut anytime in the near future. You can see that Cisco has definitely participated in the growth in the stock market. They had a significant drop, no doubt about it, here in COVID, but they were able to recover from that relatively quickly. I actually owned Cisco in my own dividend portfolio for a while, but I actually sold it when I consolidated the portfolio and took it down from about 35 to 20 about a year ago. Okay, second dividend stock we're gonna talk about here that's gonna be a great 
fit potentially for you for 2022 is the Allstate Corporation, ticker symbol ALL. They are in the financial and specifically the insurance segment of the economy. They have a dividend streak of 11 consecutive years of raising their dividend, which makes them a dividend contender. Their current price per share, $115.12. Look at this significant dividend growth rate, 40% over the past year. Three-year growth rate is 19.28%, five-year growth rate 18.15%, and 10-year growth rate 13.60%. Their current dividend yield is 2.81%. Yes, I know this one is low as well, but these dividend growth rates are significant. Their payout ratio here, their one-year payout ratio is only 20%. This is on Morningstar's website. If you go here to the main page, you go to key ratios, and then you go to full key ratios data. Look at this trend here in both revenue and free cash flow. Revenue steadily increasing year over year. Free cash flow per share, look at this increase down here from 1.6 billion, it's now at 5.1 billion. And if we look here at the free cash flow per share in comparison to their dividend, there is plenty of free cash flow available to pay this dividend many times over. In my mind, I see Allstate Corporation as a very safe and reliable bet based on the information available to us. Could you know Allstate implode here in the next two years? Of course they could, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball, but all the data points to increasing revenue, increasing free cash flow, and a very stable dividend that's increasing every single year. Allstate is definitely gonna be going into my core and high yield dividend portfolio. Whenever I add new dividend stocks to the portfolio, I try to do so, if I can, at 100 shares of the company. I'm not always able to do that, but if I can, if I'm gonna buy at least 100 shares, I'm definitely gonna be entering, not by just buying 100 shares, I'm gonna be selling a put option very close to the money to make sure that I'm collecting additional premium above and beyond just buying the stock. If you're interested in learning more about how I utilize options to increase the returns in my portfolio, make sure to check out the link for the Patreon, which includes a Discord channel in the description below. All right, third dividend stock we're gonna be talking about here is AbV. You guys know I love AbV. They've got great dividend metrics. I love this stock. I already own it. Let's talk about why. All right, AbV, ticker symbol ABBV, is in the healthcare sector of the economy. Technically, they're an offshoot from Abbott Laboratories, which is a dividend champion. So some people like to call AbV a dividend champion. I don't have any problem with that. But technically, as its own individual company, they've now been raising dividends now for 10 consecutive years, which makes them a dividend contender. Their current price per share is $116.51. They've got great dividend growth rates, and that's one of the things I love about AbV. One-year growth rate, 10.20%. Three-year growth rate, 15.82% right here. Five-year growth rate, 18.01%. Their current dividend yield, 4.84%, which is a great dividend yield. And you can see that their payout ratio, based on the most recent year, they're based on free cash flow, is only 65%. And if we go over here to look at the trending in the free cash flow per share, we can see that it's really great. 4.05%. 5.91, 8.3, 8.62, 8 and their current dividend annually $5.64 per share paid quarterly. Now, whenever we talk about AbV, we have to also talk about the looming loss of exclusivity, it's a hard word to say, loss of exclusivity with respect to their top selling drug, Humira. In fact, ever since AbV was created as a company, it's been something that everyone was concerned about. It's probably one of the big reasons why Abbott Laboratories spun off AbV and the Humira drug. Top immunology drug drug is Humira, and there's just tons of applications for this drug to treat patients with autoimmune diseases. And one of the biggest concerns here is right here, Humira sold in numerous other markets, blah, 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 makes up approximately 43% of AbbVie's total net revenues in 2020. Now, one thing you don't know is that last year in 2019, it made up 58% of revenues. So it's actually a big significant decrease in the total portion of the overall revenue for AbbVie from 58 to 43. And I would say that it's a reasonable expectation that will continue to increase, especially with the fact that AbbVie recently acquired in 2020 the um, company Allergen, which includes a lot of different aesthetics products, including Botox. So that is definitely diversifying the products and the revenues for the company. I think it's reasonable to expect that over 2021 and 2022 and in 2023, when that loss of exclusivity happens with Humira, that AbbVie will be continuing to diversify their revenue and it will be just a small bump in the road. Two big drugs that AbbVie has put out that have increased rapidly in sales are these two right here. I don't even know how to say these, so I'm just gonna guess Skirizzi 
and Renvo. You can see here this table details their worldwide net revenues. You can definitely see that Humira makes up a significant portion of revenue, but you can also see these two drugs right here have rapidly increased in sales from 355 million to 1.59 billion, and then from 47 million to 731 million. Then you've also, if you scroll down here, the aesthetics line of business right here, significant revenue coming from this segment of the business as well. So to sum it up here, guys, I like Abvi for the future. Yes, there are concerns, and yes, maybe the company will take a hit in price when this all happens in 2023, but I still feel very confident, subject to change, but I still feel very confident that Abvi will continue to be a strong dividend stock in my portfolio for many years to come. All right, last dividend stock we're talking about here is Arbor Realty Trust, ticker symbol ABR. It's in the financial sector of the economy. This is a mortgage real estate investment trust and it's been paying dividends consecutively and increasing that dividend for nine consecutive years now, which makes it a dividend challenger. Their current price per share is $18.11 and they've got strong dividend growth rates. The one-year growth rate, 10.74%, three-year growth rate, 14.19%, and five-year growth rate, 17.05%, with a really strong dividend yield at 7.95%. We can see that their payout ratio based on free cash flows of the most recent year is 16%, and they've got a really consistent trend with their free cash flow per share, scrolling over here, 2017 for $4.75 per share in free cash flow, then $4.93, then $9.68, then $8.97. Very stable and increasing, and it pays an annual dividend, paid quarterly, but it's $1.44 annually. Mortgage REITs are a little bit different than standard real estate investment trusts. With a standard REIT, you have a company that all holds a bunch of different properties, whether it be commercial or single family, multifamily, medical care facilities. With a mortgage real estate investment trust, it's instead a company that originates and potentially even services mortgages. We're here in Arbor Realty's annual report for 2020. You can see that they have diversification across a lot of different asset classes. They definitely focus though on multifamily properties. It makes up 81% of their lending. And they definitely lend a lot in New York, but they also lend in a lot of other different states as well. One of the big things you need to look at when we're talking about a real estate investment trust, or more specifically, a mortgage real estate investment trust, is net interest income. The difference between how much they make from their products, the net interest income, minus the net interest expense that it costs for them to lend money out to other people. You can see here for the year ending 2020 versus 2019, there has been a significant increase in their net interest income from 120 million here to 120. 54 million right here. You can also see significant increases in revenue over here on the Morningstar website from 2011, $47 million, up to now nearly half a billion dollars here in 2020 and in the trailing 12 months. Their dividend has increased quite a bit over that time frame, and you can see that their net income year over year has also increased quite a bit. As long as Arbor Realty Trust continues to increase their net interest income and increase their dividend, it's going to be a part of my portfolio. These are four different dividend stocks, guys, that I value highly. Like I said, I already own AbbVie and Arbor Realty Trust in my own portfolio, these two right here. And I'm going to be adding Allstate and Cisco to the core plus high yield dividend segment of the portfolio as well here over the next coming months as I have enough cash to outlay for 100 shares. Now there are tons of dividend stocks out there that I'm sure you guys think should have been on this list that weren't, it's a short list for sure. So make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. Let me know what other dividend stocks you think I missed on, why you think they're important, and which ones you'd like me to cover in the future as well. In the next week, I've got on tap for you two new videos. We're gonna definitely be covering a new dividend ETF that we've covered in previous videos as part of a larger group of dividend ETFs. We're gonna deep dive that specific dividend ETF. I think you're gonna find a lot of value in that one. The other topic we're gonna to cover next week is the idea of why do people lose money using options. A lot of people think options are scary and risky or they know somebody that have lost a lot of money. And the good news is there are very clear reasons why people lose money with options. We're gonna talk about that and that'll hopefully lead to future conversations about what are the right ways, what are the good ways to make money using options. As a quick reminder, if you want to join the Patreon community or at least learn more about what that involves, make sure to check out the link in the description below. You can join and be part of the Discord community where you have access to other members of the community that are all there trying to learn and get better with their own investing. I cover all of the moves I make in my own portfolio, all of the options plays I make in my own portfolio as well. You get access to all of my dividend stock spreadsheets and the monthly dividend stock spreadsheet. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Have a great rest of your day and please continue to stay healthy healthy, both physically and financially. Have a good one.